The film basement is filmed in sunny West Hartford, Connecticut, in front of a live studio audience. Welcome to the filmmaker's basement where we're choosing to stay in our nice damp cellar with the advancing aliens. I'm Brandon. Andrew. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about some of the movies we saw this week in addition to playing a little game show later on. And that was in reference to the movie I saw this week, uh, Nope. Or a little bit while ago. I saw this movie I saw this movie a bit ago, but I still want to go with it because I think it deserves talking about. We so, haven't recorded in so long, I forgot that movie came out. <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute, so this will definitely be a nice return. So, two siblings who run a California horse ranch discover something wonderful and sinister in the skies above, while the owner of an adjacent theme park tries to profit from the mysterious otherworldly phenomenon. So that's a very vague description, and I think that it does the movie justice in its own way, and kind of similar to how the trailer does the movie justice. I would say for this case, a better description of this would be that there this movie is about two siblings who do everything in their power to get any evidence that a UFO is harassing their family's horse farm. Um, and I think this was a fantastic take on an abduction film. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I can't remember the last time we got an actually good abduction film. Like, I think the closest that we got to even having something about alien abductions would be, like, Moonfall. And that was horrible. That was god-awful. Oh, you mean, like, recent recent? I mean, yeah, like, the only what... the ones I can think of is The Fourth Kind. And the Fourth Kind? Signs. And... Yeah, and even that, um... like, Signs is, like at least over a decade old at this point like close and en- close encounters but that's like way the old. 70s yeah. yeah um so yeah i think this was a fantastic direction to go just to explore because it's been so long so naturally I'd lo- i would have loved to see what a modern take on that would be and and jordan peele delivered um it's definitely a horror movie but i'd more so fit into the category of like horror sci-fi as i don't know it didn't feel as horror to me there were definitely horror elements to it but Mm. i guess the fear would be it's not like a jump scare fear the fear would be more of like uh the like being hunted or maybe more like existential fear kind of like that um i will say i loved how it flips the abduction formula onto its head um and i it really starts with the trailer because we get like these what's it called um we get like the trailer kind of tells the story and kind of makes it sets it up to think it's gonna be like a classic abduction film we have these little gray aliens running around there's these weird aliens and like amongst the townspeople it's kind of like that like um that old twilight zone episode where it's like they're the aliens living amongst our population and we have to find them or they're going to destroy us and it plays on that expectation at least it did with me in a very unique way that I, it had me kind of expecting that something else was going to happen in this movie. And then about halfway through, we get this kind of flip. And once you're turned on your head, it kind of opens up this world into like exploring w- how this movie can be taken in different directions. Hmm. Which usually I'm not for trailers being kind of deceiving like that, but it really works in this case. Because it doesn't inherently like, it's not lying about what's in the movie. It's just misdirecting you because everything in the trailer, as far as I can tell, is in the movie. It's just not the information that you're necessarily given at the time. And that's kind of what changes things. Hmm. Um, additionally, I loved the um, I loved how it kind of more so focuses on the ship aspect of the alien abduction. It's funny you mentioned Close Encounters of the Third Kind because it really reminds me of a combination of Close Encounters of the Third Kind meets like a Jaws film. Which sounds weird, but it really mm. makes sense in the context of the movie itself. Um, also, it's very oddly funny, which I sh- guess shouldn't surprise me because, you know, Jordan Peele came from Key and Peele. He's a comedy icon. But there were a lot of, like, laugh out loud moments in this movie that really broke the tension. Also kind of just made it more fun. Because there definitely is an aspect of fun to this movie. Um, there's particularly a scene towards the end that I'm not going to talk about. You'll know it when you see it, but it, it, it's fun. It's fun to watch. It's very entertaining. Um, there's a couple instances, uh, instances of like that comedy too. Um, that I kind of don't really want to get into now I'm thinking about it because it does spoil things a little bit. Um, 
I loved all the performances. I think everyone was very strong in this movie, which is also really dope. Um, I think OJ. I think it was OJ. Yeah, he was the kind of like the main character of this film. Kind of like this like strong, tough guy, almost like almost like an old west cowboy. He feels a little out of place um, towards the beginning of the film, but I think he really kind of fits into that role towards the middle and end, um, which is really fitting. I think it works really well. Um, the only character I would say that was kind of a little bit annoying, a little bit annoying, which I, upon later reflection, I kind of realized this was intentionally annoying, um, was Emerald Haywood, um, who's OJ's sister. She has this like social climber film person kind of attitude, which like kind of got on my nerves a little bit, but I think that was kind of the point of the character. And in additionally, mm. her and how she acts kind of connects back to the film later on, and it helps them get progress the plot. Um, additionally, there's this prize electronics guy who just kind of shows up, who I think has one of the funniest lines in the entire movie. Because essentially, like I said, they're trying to capture footage of this UFO that's on their property. So they go to Fry's Electronics to try to, like, get some cameras, get it set up. And this Fry's Electronics dude kind of tags along and helps them set up all this equipment. But the second he arrives, out of the blue, he starts bitching about this relationship he just got out of and starts talking about ancient aliens on the History Channel. And I, I, I don't, again, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's his delivery of it that's just so perfect in that moment. Hmm. Um, but yeah, overall, everyone really gave it their all. This is I was very impressed by the the acting. I'll also say it's a very tightly knit film, and maybe I might be missing something, of course. But everything that's mentioned really comes up like at some point in the film, even like small things, like in the shots of the film. Um, let's see. So like, kind of going back to Emerald and how she's like this filmmaker who's like kind of like trying to get connections. Towards the beginning of the film, we see OJ and her working on a film set. They're horse people, essentially. They work in Hollywood to deliver horses on sets and all that kind of stuff. Do animal training stuff, that kind of thing. So there's a safety speech that she gives where she kind of, like, lists off all these talents she has. Like, like she's a sewer, she works in crafts, all that stuff. Really putting herself out there, classic film person style. And you're, like, in the beginning, you're like, okay, this, is this all really necessary? Like, why is this here? But then later on in the film... As a result of that speech, one of the people on set remembers her, who then helps them get some more stuff that helps them do things related to their main goal. Mm. So it connects back, and it's this tiny detail you don't even notice. Um, additionally, there's another detail early on. Um, when they're visiting that other rival ranch, who I, didn't, I haven't even gone into yet, but I'll dive into it a little bit. Um, they have these like big like metal horses out front. It's kind of like an Old West theme park, if that makes sense. Um, and again, it's one of those things where we focus on them for a little bit too long. And you're like, I don't know why we're focusing on these horses until it comes back up again later on. And you're like, oh, okay, so this is why they were talking about this. This is why this happened. So that way X and Y and blah, 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 blah. And it even leads way later into the film where you're like, okay, so as a result of these early actions, this comes up all the way at the end. So I thought that was really kind of cool on that part. See a movie that was this tight and like everything felt very wrapped up. Mm. Um, let's see. I additionally, I, again, I, I won't go too deeply into it because I don't want to spoil a ton of things. Um, the the visual effects shots of the UFO are genuinely impressive. There were parts where I could not tell it was real. I couldn't tell it was fake. Like it genuinely looked very real in the scene, and I think part of that has to do with how they shot the movie, and specifically the UFO, because they never. There's not a ton of sequences where you're just seeing the UFO like right in your face. Like, that's not really how it works. It's kind of like moving through clouds and, like, hiding behind objects. And if you do see it, you see it for a second and it's gone. Um, kind of, like, kind of again, treating like a... it like the shark from Jaws, where it's like you don't see it a lot. But when you right. do, it's really in there. Uh, isn't there, wasn't there a clip in the trailer that showed it pretty prominently? That Was that in the film or was it not? So, like I said, there, like I said, there are some instances where you do see it on screen but it's not there for very long like i think that shot's only a few seconds at most mm. so and then he Im immediately we i think that's the one in, where he's like at the where the ufo like dives down and then like there's yeah, that he's, dude he's on walls he's on well he's on a horse and then mm. it's it comes up behind him when he's on the horse like real close yeah. to the ground so yeah I you know I, it, that yeah thing. no actually that does jog my memory a little bit on that um it <laughs> later on it does show up a bit more i will say it still looks very good there mm. 
but there are more often than not it is hiding it is not hidden it's like it's nighttime it's cloudy it's raining like they do a very good job of hiding it and that therefore makes it look a lot more real because you're not really focusing on like the actual ufo itself Mm -hmm. um additionally i will say one thing um there's kind of a b plot to this movie that doesn't seem to connect at all to it. Specifically, it's kind of referencing this old television show in the film's universe that happened in the 70s. Relating to, uh, essentially it was like one of those like chimp shows, if that makes sense. Like it was like a family that has a pet chimp. And like they're kind of living with the chimp, doing things with the chimp. Something goes horribly wrong with that. And you kind of hear about it throughout the whole movie. You see flashbacks to this event. And throughout the whole movie, you're trying to kind of like figure out how this connects to the rest of the film. Because it seems really out of pocket and out of place. Mm. Definitely give it a shot. Because it does connect back to the main film later on in a way you're not going to see coming. Hmm. So I like that a lot. Because when I figured out why that was there, it was like a light bulb went off my head. It was like, oh, so they're trying to teach us something here. This is important for me to remember. Which I thought was very cool. Hmm. Um, so yeah, overall, I personally, I think this is my favorite Jordan Peele movie, just because I like the abduction, the alien abduction aspect to it. I thought, I like that sci-fi element. I thought it was very cool and very well used. Um, I have been hearing people say it's not like as good as his other films, which I, I don't know. I, I don't know why they don't like it as much as me. I think it's fantastic. Um, and like I was saying earlier, I think it's just cool to have like, an alien abduction film out there. It's not a style of film we see all that often anymore. It definitely had its heyday, I think, back in like the 70s and 80s when that Mm. was a bigger thing as a concept. But I think there's definitely room to explore more modern abduction topics. So I, I don't know. I hope I see more films like this in the future, but this one was pretty good. This, this compared to the other two movies, like the other two, I don't, what you said about how people think it's not as good as the other two, like, the other two movies had so many um, different overtones. Like hmm. um, Get Out was a lot about um, race, and um, Us was uh, a lot to do with like personalities. Um, mm-hmm. And there was just like these don't like about Candy small. Man. I think that was him too. It was Candyman. I yeah. don't remember. I didn't see Candyman, it, and I don't, I, re- I don't remember much no. about Candyman. Hmm. That one might have been about. S- I think it was like, generational trauma. Was that? Yeah, one. that or like uh, psychological kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and this one just seemed like an aliens movie. Like it just it did like it didn't seem like there was any like subtle overtone that mm-hmm. uh, was being pushed. Uh, unlike his other movies that he's done. I think there is one. I think it's just more subtle. It's like one of those things where I feel like I'd have to rewatch the movie again. Mm-hmm. I think there's something there about being hunted. I don't know what that would be, though. Hmm. Or even something maybe dealing with, like, the Old West or, like, the place of human. I don't know. It's something I'd have to rewatch for sure, but I'm sure there's some context, additional context to it. Because he, he's a smart filmmaker. Mm-hmm. He's very good about, like, you know, knitting those little, like, knitting those ideas into his plot. So sure. I would not be surprised if there was one. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, definitely see it if you have a chance. It's a, it's pretty. It's a pretty cool movie. Mm-hmm. So I saw a movie that also came out around the same time that Nope did, mm-hmm. which I don't even remember when Nope came out. I think that was. Um, in it was like June twenty fifth. I think. Late. Was it late June? I thought it was late. No, July. it was July. It was July. Yeah, it was late July. Um, I saw Bullet Train, which came out yes! two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw it, I think, opening weekend, um, I think. But this movie is great because, yes. and I saw somebody put this as one of their reviews. Like, it, was a, mm-hmm. it wasn't a critic. It was just, like, a fan. It was a fan review. They said that this movie had great exposition like an expositional storytelling like so so this story is all about exposition like there's there's like six or seven different characters it goes through a backstory of each character and 
um, you find out at the end that they're all kind of intertwined together um, by this one bad guy at the end of the movie Mm -hmm. um and it's fantastic like uh brad pitt's great in it um let's see the uh aaron taylor johnson whatever his name is uh is great in it there's the other guy that like his brother uh is great the the black the black character in it is amazing like the movie was hilarious um which is not surprising considering it came from the guy who did deadpool 2 oh i did not know that that explains why that trailer was so funny yeah yeah so um so basically there's five assassins aboard a fast moving bullet train uh find out their missions have something in common is pretty much what this movie's about without giving anything else away Hmm. uh other than that like a a little longer storyline plot is that ladybug which is brad pitt's character uh, is an unlucky assassin determined to do his job peacefully after one too many gigs gone off the rails. Fate, however, may have other plans, as Ladybug's latest mission puts him on a collision course with lethal adversaries from around the globe, all with connected yet conflicting objectives on the world's fastest train. The end of the line is just the beginning in this nonstop thrill ride through modern-day Japan. The entire movie takes place, pr- like, okay 90 percent of this movie takes place on the on the train excellent which is awesome so like everything is on this one train and everything happens it, it i was a little upset by it a little bit because there was there would be a character that would get introduced and like mm-hmm. five minutes later um that character doesn't exist anymore <laughs> so like so it's oh. like hmm. what what <laughs> like so what do you mean like doesn't exist like the movie forgets about them and no, like they, you never like, return they to get, them or they get killed off okay yeah so That's like valid. Yeah. yeah so like the main the main assassins that you meet at the beginning and then there are multiple people that are like added to this whole heist um because it is it, it's what it is it's a heist movie um the people that get added later in the movie they don't last very long it's really the people that you see on the train at the beginning lots of death in the movie lots of gore which is you know obviously from the guy who did deadpool 2 so um but this movie's great like it it is a lot of exposition and there's a lot of like roller coaster kind of stuff where there's like a lot of ups and then there's like it gets to a point where it's kind of down a little bit and it's it's further explaining stuff and then it ramps back up again uh and then you know kind of does that thing a couple of times but overall like Brad Pitt does really, really good in this movie. He's really funny uh, in this role. It it felt a lot like um, his role in Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but like a more comedic version of that character. Mm-hmm. Whereas he's not as like a serious guy. He was more like a like a funny like down on his luck like secret agent kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I mean the side plot of this movie is okay i mean it all kind of there's a couple of different side plots to this movie and they all come together at the end which was really nice to see them all kind of mesh and meld together by the end of the movie but um i would definitely recommend to go see it because of like how like well put together the movie is and how how good and funny it is because it is it's 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 very it's a very good time it's like two hours and i was pretty much laughing throughout the whole the whole thing Mm -hmm. so Um, you said it was expository like what form does that exposition take like is it just two people sitting in a chair talking like are we seeing flashbacks there's a lot of flashbacks okay like there's a like when a character gets introduced they put in a flashback Mm -hmm. like and there's there's one two three four five six seven different characters um that like get are predominantly featured uh, that have a f- like a flashback um, like exposition um, to it when when the characters are on screen and they're talking with each other it's not you know that bad like expositional wise um, but uh, there is a character who is off screen for the majority of the movie uh, it's basically like uh, Brad Pitt's handler mm-hmm. and he is talking to her throughout pretty much the whole movie just telling her what's going on so that's a lot of like what the expositional exposition came from um and then there's this 
other piece of this movie, which was hilarious, is that these two brothers, they call them the twins. It's their names are Tangerine and Lemon. And um Lemon has this fascination with Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, okay. And they're what? they're two there's two they're two British guys. <laughs> and so Lemon has this fascination with Thomas the Tank Engine and mm-hmm. he basically says that he can read someone so well and compare them to a character <laughs> from Thomas the Tank Engine. So like this whole movie they're looking oh for God. I don't know if you are familiar with Thomas the Tank yes, Engine at all. Yes, I loved it as a child. So did I. So <laughs> this whole movie he's saying they're looking for a diesel and I put that in quotes because diesel pardon my French is the asshole of Thomas the Tank Engine. So they're looking for a diesel on this train oh and God. like he compares like people to Percy who's like a big pussy and like he compares people to gordon who is also like an asshole but like a cocky asshole um and yeah it's god it's funny every and it it gets brought up it gets brought up consistently throughout the entire movie like the entire two hours every like 20 minutes there is a mention of thomas tank engine and it's great it's so good See, that's how you know, like, it's going to be good. Because they came out of something, they came up with something so out of pocket like that for this character. Yeah. But, like, I could see it in this world. Like, it's mm-hmm. ridiculous, but it's not, like, entirely unbelievable, which I like. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that's fantastic. See, I was very excited to see this movie because of the first trailer they released with it, with the, um, mm-hmm. the Staying Alive. What was that song? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, they did stay in, and they, they did that in the movie. Like okay. That, that, yeah. It's like the during the opening credits, they play Staying Alive, in but in Japanese. Yes, which um, I, I liked it about the trailer. It felt mm-hmm. very different. I could see the comedy coming in with it. Mm-hmm. Like, it seemed really unique and cool, which is what got me excited about it. And I'm glad to hear it lives up to the expectation, because oh, it yeah. definitely seems like... It just seemed like a, that kind of movie that could either go really well or it was lying to us the whole time and yeah. goes poorly. There's like a there's a main plot with Brad Pitt, but then there's like there's there's like five different subplots that are going mm-hmm. on all at the same time, and like I said, they all come together uh, by the end, which is nice. It's a nice like way that they mm-hmm. brought it together. So it's good. It's mm-hmm. uh, definitely go see it. It was definitely worth the pay in to go see. That is excellent. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm definitely seeing it this weekend because I was very hyped for that movie to come out. Oh, man. Well, speaking of stuff that probably isn't nearly as hyped to come out, uh, let's go to everyone's favorite game show, Pilot Wings. Mm. Okay. And I guess a little disclaimer up here. I think I might actually switch out Pilot Wings soon for a different game show concept. Okay. Um, I might actually do that like whenever we hit the one year mark or whatever, whatever, whatever that was for last year. I'll look it up. Uh. Yeah. 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 I'll look it up. Find out what it is later on. So this might be different so- soon, but we shall see. So Andrew's played this game a million times, but for those who haven't, Pilot Wings is a game show where I pitch Andrew three show log lines. Two of them are real shows that were pitched, and one of them is fake. And it's up to Andrew to guess which is the fake one. So. Number one, Michael was the top assassin for the Pittsburgh outfit, but after his last hit, he found a recently orphaned baby in his target's house. In a rare moment of humanity, he decides to leave the outfit and become this child's father, much to the dismay of his former boss, who starts sending rival assassins to end this new happy family. Two, Carrie is the clean-nosed black sheep in a family of petty thieves, drug addicts, and narcissists. But when her brother is sent to prison, she decides to raise his kids along with her adopted African-American son and give them the normal lives they deserve. And three. Based on the British series of the same name, a well-intentioned father of a highly intelligent and verbal son, who also happens to be his complete opposite, inadvertently takes a job at the Secret Service in order to prove himself a worthy father. So, Andrew, out of these three, which one do you think is the fake one? What the hell is a Pittsburgh outfit? Like, the Pittsburgh... What? A top assassin for the Pittsburgh outfit? Is it like a... Is remember, it like a team? Remember that movie that came out a while ago, The Something Outfit? Um, What was it? That Taylor movie that I talked about. 
Taylor movie. It's like another name for a Wasn't gang. Wasn't it called The Outfit? Yeah. Wasn't it just called The Outfit? No, but that, yeah, that's another name for gang, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was just called The Outfit. Yeah, okay. I think that was a re- supposed to be a reference to that. Interesting. Um, You just have them both capitalized. So I'm like, was that a team that mm-hmm. I'm like unaware of? <laughs> a team of assassins? I don't know. I, yeah. Um, a recently a orphaned baby? Well... It, it sounds like it sounds like the hangover like mixed with john wick like that's weird mm-hmm. um the second one sounds a lot like shameless but i know that that character is not called carrie it's something else mm-hmm. don't remember but i don't remember because i know shameless is a remake these are all american tv shows no they're not because one is based off of no yeah uh, so wait i have a question then mm-hmm. are these all american tv shows they should be okay i'm usually pulling them off of like variety.com for like right. abc like abc nbc like whatever so yeah because I'm, I'm just i was just trying to think because i was like that sounds a lot like shameless but mm-hmm. i know they that shameless is a, like a remake but it's based off of the british mm-hmm. show shameless but mm-hmm. okay um and then the third one uh well-intentioned father of a highly intelligent and and, and verbal son perhaps this be his complete opposite inadvertently takes a job at sounds like chuck um mm-hmm. but that's not i mean inadvertently takes a job at the secret service um chuck kind of just got thrown in too that um so i don't know that first one sounds so just out there that it sounds wrong so i'm just gonna go with the first one okay you locking that one in yeah (sighs) fair enough yeah first one was the fake one (laughs) that one just sounded way too like i was trying to think of like a mix between like what is it because i've seen something similar to this kind of like a happy meets like a Oh, what's it called? What was that, like, early 2000s movie? Like, The Babysitter with, like, Vin Diesel or whatever? Oh, The Pacifier? The Pacifier. I think that's what I was thinking. I was trying to do, like, a mix (laughs) between those two movies. (laughs) Something like that. That, I was like, that just seems so far out there that, like, Mm -hmm. a man is... Like, it sounds like a movie, not a TV show. Fair enough. To to me. Okay. Yeah, I can see what you mean. All right. The first one's called... The one with Carrie is called The Crazy Gene. It was passed over. Hmm. And the second one was called Spy, and I think it got turned to a TV movie. Sometimes it's really hard to track these films down, these things down, because yeah. they just like vanish. So I think it got turned into a TV movie. A Spy, the movie was with Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, and Rose Byrne. I don't think it was that one. Might have. It been. was a. Yeah, no, it's just, this is a desk-bound CIA analyst volunteers yeah. to go undercover to infiltrate the world of deadly arms. Yeah, slightly different. So, yeah, that one's not quite right either. Um, so, yeah, that's Pilot Wings this week. Um, hopefully I'll get you next week. Get something a little less ridiculous in here. <laughs> and if my phone won't stop lagging. <laughs> Don't know what that's about. But, yeah, let's dive into the movies that are coming out next week. And there should be a decent amount because I know August was supposed to be. It's been a better movie. It's month. not. I mean, it is and it isn't. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, I would go see that. And then there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, there's a lot of stuff Beast. that I'm like, no. Yeah. That's, that's the only one that I. Know oh, of. this movie. This is. Where is it now? This is IMDb a weird changed concept. their whole stuff. Yeah, I don't like how calendar. they updated their go. thing. It's not great. Oh, okay. There is there is quite a few actually. Yeah, there's a decent chunk of movies. I don't know if they're good movies, but they're coming no. out. So there was one movie that came out, and because we haven't recorded in the last couple of weeks, mm-hmm. there was one movie that came out that I was a little interested in, but I may wait until it's like on HBO or something. It's called mm-hmm. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Um, oh yeah, that like it's like Blumhouse the like a bunch of looking. bunch of yeah a bunch of friends yeah. get together for a party and then there's a murder, mm-hmm. and they have to figure out like who the murderer is, kind of like Scream esque yeah but it's more like comedy like teen comedy it's got pete davidson in it yeah i was like meh 
It's... But Beast, Beast, I want to go see next weekend. Yeah, that... this weekend. That's another movie that's kind of like bringing back something we haven't seen in a while, like the Man Hunted by Animals film. Mm-hmm. I'm trying mm-hmm. to think of the last time we got something that was similar to that. Mm-hmm. At least something big that was similar to that. Like, yeah, like I I don't remember the last time I've seen a movie where it's like an animal just is so caught up on one person mm-hmm. that they they have to go kill that person because that's what it sounds a lot like yeah um so it's just like yeah i don't know and the trailers Fair look enough. great and it has idris elba in it who's it does great. have idris elba i will say it's not on this current list but it did come out recently uh if you get a chance go see marcella shell with shoes on it was oh, very yeah? wholesome and it almost made me cry hmm that movie was a lot and i was not expecting that uh, that's actually the movie i think we're going to be talking about next week so nice we'll have that to I'll, talk about hopefully i'll see a movie next week it's been a rough go for me for a little while you bet um it. there is one movie that's coming out uh after next week which is the mm-hmm. week after uh, uh my girlfriend was interested in because she likes spooky stuff mm-hmm. and it's the invitation yeah what even is this i've never i haven't even heard of this so the trailers make it look like this woman gets invited by this random stranger to a wedding and i put that in quotes a wedding Interesting. and like the entire time she's like where's the bride and groom where's the bride and groom and then it's revealed that um she is the one getting married to this other guy that's a lot (laughs) yeah and i i was i was going like the trailer just popped up when i clicked on it and i guess the reason the the way that she met these people or the way that she got invited to this wedding is she put a dna test in and found like a long lost second cousin or something Hmm. so she ended up being this second cousin Hmm. of this person who brought her to a wedding and she ended up being the bride and like it's like a cult too so like there was one part there's one scene in the trailer where like a maid gets her throat slashed Mm -hmm. and they start drinking the blood so i don't know if it has to do with vampires either because it could um because it it does look it does look like vampiric but they're out in the sunlight so i don't know but twilight threw out the whole thing about like vampires and sunlight so we'll see i don't know it looks it looks spooky and my girlfriend likes spooky stuff so that is valid there's one more thing i wanted to bring up because i'm very excited about this and Mm -hmm. she watches the podcast so Mm -hmm. sorry um she has agreed to allow me to show her every mcu movie oh god that has come out because she has never seen them all 50 of them <laughs> there no there's not 50 don't listen to him <laughs> all, all 10, it's, all 7, it's, it's like it's like 30 films. it's like 35 <laughs> it's, feel, that does not feel like enough it feels it's like that it's the marvel cinematic like it's not every, i'm not showing her every marvel movie like going mm-hmm. back to like blade and like fantastic four it's anything yeah. that has to do with the actual cinematic universe huh. that started with iron man in 2008 it's i mm. counted them out it's like 37 35 really? movies um Surprised. but i'm very excited about this because this allows me mm-hmm. to re-watch the movies and it f- and i can by proxy feel like i'm watching them for the first time mm-hmm because that's something that I've talked about with other people that if I could go back, like I would love to go back mm-hmm. and watch. Like, do you remember like your favorite movie? Like yeah. that you've seen and it's like how like cool would it be to go back and rewatch it for the first time ever? Yes. <laughs> like, that's just like something that I talked about with my friends. Like if I could go back and rewatch Avengers Endgame for the first time, like sitting in the theater, like mm-hmm. on the edge of my seat, like I would just, oh, or like yeah. watching Lord of the Rings for the first time or the green mile or something, or just mm-hmm. something that's like that good, like that. I love it. Just, it'll feel, it's going to feel nice to, to share that yeah. with someone who's never experienced it. So I'm very excited and I will keep you all updated mm-hmm. week by week. Yeah. I was about uh, to say, maybe we could do a quick little update on the show. Yeah. Being like, how, what did she think of X movies? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll review each movie, like with a little, <laughs> little, like three minute, like at the end of That'd the be fun thing so i like that i'll keep you guys updated okay um well on that note i think that takes us to the end of the podcast andrew do you have anything you want to update us on just did
<laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, I don't have anything I want to do. Actually, no, that's not true. If you get a chance, um, I don't know if, how long it's going to be in theaters for. It's probably already out already. If you can't see Marcel the Shell with shoes on, see it in yeah. theaters. It's it is very it, it's a movie that deserves to be seen. Um, I will admit the first ten minutes were a little bit sus. I'll get more into it less next week, but it, mm-hmm. just get past and get into it. It's really worth it. But yeah, thank you all for listening to this episode of the Filmmaker's Basement. I'm Brandon. I'm Andrew. And it's been a pleasure talking to y'all. See y'all next time. Bye.